Welcome to the last leg of um, an afternoon of degrowth and embracing weakness at SOS, Soft Solidarity Assembly. And the first thing we let degrow today is time, but that's because it's a time of technology. And as we all know, that's highly subjective time. You know, when you upload something and it says 10 minutes or 10 hours, it's just subjective. And it's the subjectivity of usually of your computer. So apologies, though, for the delay. And I'm very happy to welcome Natasha Sandra Gigan, who's the last speaker of this part of the assembly. Um, and unfortunately, we have to cut short the plan of originally um, bringing everybody back together for discussion. But I'm very much looking forward to her presentation. Um, and I will begin by introducing her. She is a Berlin-based artist and a professor for sculpture at the Art University in Bremen and also a very dear old friend. And I mentioned this, or maybe I should say comrade, um, because, well, I'll come back to that. Um, first, I would like to say that for those who do not know her work, that her installations, video and audio works, as well as performative interventions, um, often analyze and reveal social and infrastructural politics. Um, they are often focused on the question how agency is shaped, um, how visibilities emerge, and most importantly, what the economies are that shape both technologies, geopolitical stratifications, and contemporary subjectivities. Um, she also often asks in her work what makes art itself possible, and what would it take to do, to work, or to be otherwise. She has won many awards, and most recently the Hannah Höch Award by the State of Berlin, which was honored with the exhibition Passing One Loop into Another at the NBK, um, and which I believe questioned anthropocentric and human-centered narratives. And I'm saying I believe because it's one of these things um, that I just happened to miss, have missed the show. So I'm especially happy that we managed lockdown. to, yeah, well, that's not an excuse. <laughs> Um, but we all know that FOMO is a real thing. Um, I'm happy, though, that we get to be here together today, um, not least because I learned a lot from Natasha in the past two decades um, where our lives every now and then come together, um, including My questioning voice. the authority of biography and the hierarchies of authorship in the art world. Today, she will speak about collectivity and what, it hold, what holds it together and what strains it. Again, that is, she will focus on this question of solidarity and assembly in relation to artistic practice in the field of art. Welcome, Natasha. Thank you, Nana. Um, thank you for the invitation and thank you, Nana, for keeping such good company um, this afternoon. Um, we are in a very big um, studio. Uh, it's uh, filled with a lot of people who make this possible and I want to um, thank you all for, um, yeah, working in the background and and um, making this um, possible technically, but also socially um, and structurally. And I also want to thank you, thank um, Övül, uh, Solve, and Katrin for organizing um, this assembly. And um, yeah, I had prepared uh, a couple of questions or what I conceive as challenges about um, solidarity or what Elizabeth Povinelli calls keeping oneself knotted. Um, I decided that I would um, maybe keep them for discussion because um, Binny has already um, laid out so, so beautifully what solidarity can do and maybe what it can't. And Marwa also has um, shown us and talked about um, yeah, the challenges uh, with solidarity in practice, um, especially when it comes to artistic practice. And um, I think I'm going to dive directly back into that mess. Um, and, and I think um, maybe some of what those strains are um, that um, yeah, are at play uh, when when we try to keep ourselves knotted, but the strains that, that try to open these knots um, that, that kind of work um, against collectivity, uh, I think they, they will also become clear in, in what I'm going to talk about. Uh, Övül um, had asked me to talk about uh, Anka Centrum surviving in the ruinous ruin, which I will gladly do, but um, I would like to um, 
um, yeah, open maybe with uh, another maybe teaser of, of something that um, has happened recently during the lockdown, a coalition had formed um, here in Berlin. And um, it was at a moment when uh, all around the world uh, monuments of colonial violence were toppled and in Berlin uh, on an already miserable castle, uh, AKA the Humboldt Forum, um, uh, suddenly a golden orb and, and, uh, and cross uh, appeared and an inscription that demanded of um, the living and the dead uh, to kneel in front of Jesus. Um, this is, of course, uh, the castle that um, is a deep fake castle. It was rebuilt um, to, um, to house uh, the collections of um, non-European artifacts um, that have been looted from all around the world. Um, so this coalition formed um, to, um, yeah, to basically, to make it short, to tear it down and turn it upside down. The coalition calls itself the Coalition of Cultural Workers Against the Humboldt Forum. And um, maybe we can um, go to the slides. Because I want to show you just um, a few images from the first um, yeah, from, from the first actions that took part, um, uh, that took uh, place a couple of months ago. Um, and I, I, I want to mention this uh, particularly because um, uh, the coalition is preparing uh, actions um, for, yeah, the still planned opening of, of the Humboldt Forum in, on the 18th of December. So please um, watch out for um, actions around that date. And um, if you are interested in joining the coalition, you're also more than welcome. Um, there's a choir that uh, you can join uh, and there's different working groups um, that, um, yeah, that are involved in different preparations uh, for actions. So um, yeah, this is, um, just a few slides from the first action that we did in front of the Humboldt Forum. Here you see the this golden uh, globus cruciger, the orb and, and cross on top of, of the Humboldt Forum. And in blue, um, you see the inscription a little bit below, um, gold on blue, um, the Prussian colors, of course. Um, this is uh, the coalition. Um, with um, a model of, uh, this was a, a basically the first rehearsal for tearing it down. So you see a model of the Globus Cruciger that we are going to um, then uh, yeah, throw into the Spree. Um, Marwa is also part of the coalition, um, so it's nice that we are here together. Uh, here you see it landing in the Spree. Um, this is basically just the rehearsal. This is what we want to do uh, for real with the actual one. Um, so yeah, um, this just as as a as a, uh, an invitation to um, to become part of the coalition. Um, we um, yeah, as I said, we want to tear it down and turn it upside down, which means that we um, basically want to ask for not only taking down the cross, but um, to turn, turn upside down the structure um, of, of this institution that is about to open and about to um, yeah, um, be um, one of the very visible institutions in the city um, with um, a very big budget. And this is why our main, um, yeah, our main demand is basically defunding of this institution and um, directing the funds towards um, actual decolonization um, of uh, yeah the the collection but also in in large uh, of um, of Berlin I would say so um, I think I have to um, 
make another detour, which is not really a detour because um, the um, um, the issues are still pressing and and um, and still um, unresolved. Um, I I have been part, and, and this is also where um, Nana and I are comrades. Um, we have been part of a, a working group um, that prepared a people's tribunal called Unraveling the NSU Complex. Um, here you see a, a still from a video um, that was filmed in 2006 in Kassel, uh, one month after Halid Yozgad was killed um, by the NSU and um, 4,000 people marched. The demonstration um, was apparently invisible to uh, the media and, and also to uh, leftist, um, uh, anti-fascist and anti-racist groups. Uh, and, and this, um, yeah, this structural racism that made um, this big demonstration and, and also the, the knowledge um, situated in the communities that were um, targeted, um, invisible, um, led to um, the founding of, of uh, different initiatives in all the places where um, people had lost their lives or were attacked by the NSU. And um, those initi initiatives formed a big coalition to, um, yeah, to uh, start a people's tribunal uh, about unraveling the NSU complex because apparently this was not done by um, those who had promised to do so. Uh, Bini had, um, had referred to promises by Angela Merkel um, earlier and, and this was another promise by her that she had promised to the families that, um, that the NSU would be unraveled and we have seen with the NSU 2.0 um, that um, none of that has happened really. And um, another, uh, yeah, I, I, um, I, sh I just show you um, images. Um, th these are of course um, other images of demonstrations that take, pl uh, um, that take place in Kassel every year. Um, in, in memory of the of the victims, um, these are the names of the of the victims, and we always um, say their names. Um, now we also have to say the names of the people in in Hanau. I will read the names of the victims of um, of the NSU: Abdul Rahim Özdoğru, Suleiman Tashköprü, Theodoris Bulgaridis, Halid Yozgad, Ismail Yashar. Habil Kilic, Enver Chimshek, Mehmed Turgut, Mehmed Kubashik. We don't have time to go into um, the tribunal, um, but I just want to show you this, um, yeah, this wonderful image um, from the last day of the tribunal. Um, and something else that came out of it was uh, a presentation at Documenta 14 by the Society of Friends of Halid. This was, uh, you you see on this small monitor, again, the video that I showed you a screenshot of in the beginning, and, and you see that demonstration, that uh, ghostly demonstration marching uh, on um, on the wall, um, uh, yeah, as a, as a wallpaper. A very, very uh, close to where the actual um, exhibition took place. And inside there was um, the investigation by forensic architecture investigating the presence of uh, a secret service agent um, uh, at the time of the killing of uh, Halid Yozgat in his internet shop. Um, and this investigation, uh, of course, um, laid out all of the knowledge that already existed in the family and also in the community, um, but um, received a lot of uh, attention when presented at uh, the documenta. So the documenta became, as we uh, often say, uh, a kind of amplification, an amplifier. We used it as an amplifier um, for, um, yeah, for asking those pressing questions. Um, when I was asked 
to um, by Franziska Soljum, the curator of um, the German pavilion in, in 2019, when she approached me in 2018 um, whether we would work together on this. You can imagine with um, this kind of uh, background that uh, it, it came um, yeah, with, uh, with a lot of um, yeah, challenges and, and questions of, of how, how you could, in the words of Nana, carve out space in such a setting, uh, how you could uh, keep yourself knotted in such a setting. Um, and I, uh, I took a, a couple of um, measures. I felt they were necessary um, already as, you know, in, in, in the start. And, and one of them was, and you see that here, that um, I uh, decided not to speak um, for the entire time of the project. Instead, um, I asked um, um, my dear friend Helene Duldung, uh, aka uh, uh, Susanne Sachse, the wonderful Z Susanne Sachse, uh, to be my spokesperson. Uh, so we became this uh, symbiotic partnership of a voice um, and um, and a stone or a, uh, yeah um, a, a body or like I don't know. It was a um, it, it was very challenging and and awkward and at the same time very very necessary um, to to do this. Um, and yes, as you could see, covering my head. Um, but also, I'm, I, I don't know if I can zoom in here. Um, you might see that there's a, a whistle, a whistle um, that carries the um, uh, yeah the logo of uh, the tribunal um, unraveling the NSU complex. This is us standing in front of our um, a commissioner, the Auswärtiges Amt, the um, um, Foreign Affairs Office, and um, the the last um, yeah precaution or or form that I, I felt was necessary was to um, to alter my name to 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 make it suitable for this occasion um, to to basically integrate it into. Um, uh, yeah, whatever Germanness um, that was projected onto this um, job that was given to us. Um, I find hu humor an extremely important um, uh, friend and, and tool in in trying to carve out spaces. Um, so I think that's um, that's maybe one of the reasons why this felt very necessary. Um, but um, there was other complications, and and I want to sh I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, this is uh, just maybe to um, to to wrap up this chapter of of the of why this form was necessary. The protocol of the German pavilion says that you have to give the uh, the foreign minister of Germany a tour through the pavilion at the opening. So um, uh, yeah, this is the, the failed handshake uh, situation that um, occurred because I couldn't see his hand. And I think this is where I felt that the form actually did its job where it, it worked. Um, but back to the beginning and, and, and where this um, strain appears. Um, while um, Francisca Zolium and I were talking about um, whether we, we can do this or not, whether we can do this, um, uh, yeah, this, this project together or not, um, a, an event happened um, simultaneously at um, the, a small town called Elwangen. Um, it was uh, a police raid in uh, a refugee camp um, in a Landeserstaufnahmestelle um, that uh, was all over the media. Um, you saw images of, um, yeah, of of a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, um, special forces police or riot police and people being arrested, uh, their faces blurred, um, and and the media. Uh, Portrayed an image of um, of camps out out of control with uh, dangerous inhabitants that um, that you have to keep away from society because they um, yeah they are a threat basically. The press conference of the police used um, racist language um, and stereotyping and um, and all of this um, 
basically concluded in the Minister of the Interior announcing that this is why we need anchor centers, anchor center standing um, for an abbrevi abbrevi abbreviation, <laughs> sorry, uh, Ankunft, Entscheidung und Rückkehr, uh, Arrival, Decision and Return, um, which uh, would um, kind of, um, yeah, create a situation where you can uh, deport people more easily and keep them um, separate from the rest of society in a more efficient way um, to, to basically not allow solidarity groups um, to have access um, to those communities and, um, and for the people, for the inhabitants to not have access to, to, legal, um, uh, to other kind of uh, legal uh, aid or information. Um, but um, there was also other images that, um, yeah, that that kind of occurred on on social media. This is um, one of of one of these raids. I learned afterwards that, of course, this was not the only raid. These um, there was in the last um, yeah three years there were over two hundred of these police raids in in the refugee camps in in the south of Germany. And um, when you look at the police. Um, there was a lot of discussion to who are they actually like what are they 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 have these sticks and um they were wearing um gear that almost made them look like um crusaders um so it, it was a, a, a sort of police force that no one had ever seen before and um and then there was a very important press conference by the inhabitants of um of Elwangen camp um who told the story as um, as it happened from their perspective, and um, and it was a very important voice uh, in in basically um, uh, showing that um, that the police raids in the camps are mostly to rep retribute for organizing and for um, struggles that um, happen in the camps and um, and um, that um, yeah ha have to be systematically. Uh, broken up and and punished uh, and criminalized. Um, so um, it was really a journey into understanding um, uh, or learning even about um, the organizing in the camps from uh, refugee activists um, who um, are mostly in uh, in the south in 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 camps in in Bavaria and and in Baden-Württemberg where in Bavaria there's um, very harsh conditions because of the. Um, um, the police laws there and and making the camps uh, dangerous, uh, uh, defining them as dangerous places, so that the pol police has uh, has more access and there's um, different types of laws. Um, but also, uh, it was um, it became clear that um, it's it's a wider struggle against deportation and uh, against um, the asylum laws and against um, the the yeah uh, the border uh, policies of the European Union, and uh, here you see, um, uh, for example, from the Wheel Come United um, parade in 2017 or 18. I'm, now I'm not not sure. Um, there was also um, yeah a lot of um, tactics and techniques how to prevent. Um, uh, deportations. One of them, very successfully, uh, using whistles, um, so that when the police came at night, uh, everyone would blow their whistle, and uh, the, 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 ver the sheer like noise would drive the police away. And this um, was successfully used for several months in uh, Osnabrück. Um, that struggle then connected. Um, to the struggles in the agricultural system of the Re European Union, um, on the fields, on the plantations. Um, this is in uh, in the region of Foggia, um, in in the south of Italy, where a lot of people actually. What I then learned, a lot of also people who were deported from Germany, end up working on these fields, and they organize. Um, in different forms, mostly union organizing, um, and. Uh, yeah, uh, fighting the conditions on on the fields that um, that uh, you can basically compare to slave labor and very um, precarious, very dangerous also. 
Um, and then it, it also connects to yet another struggle which is happening on the Mediterranean Sea. And, and here I think um, yet another complication or another challenge of, of solidarity becomes apparent where in the recent years um, solidarity itself um, is, is, is systematically being criminalized. So that even the people who, um, who, for example, here in this case, the Juventa of um, the organization Jugend Rettet, um, or yeah, not only their ship being confiscated, the ship is, is already um, confiscated since 2017, sitting in the harbor of Trapani, but also um, members of the crew are facing prison sentences up to 20, uh, and some of them even 25 years, like, um, like these two, um, Sarah Mardani and, and uh, Sean Binder, two swimmers who are um, also facing uh, prison sentences. They, they actually have been also in prison for uh, 100, year, 100 years, 100 days, sorry. Um, so um, all of this um, basically um, uh, connecting to historical formations of the prison, the plantation and the border. Um, and, and, and I think this is uh, important as, you know, the, the regimes of accumulation and dispossession are recurring ones. Um, and and, um, and they, you think they are overcome, but they, they come uh, in, in different forms, they come back in different forms. And um, this was basically the starting point of, um, of the Anker Centrum, um, Anker Centrum surviving in the ruinous ruin. Um, where I'm, I'm going to take you through the different parts of the project um, very briefly. Um, Anna, you, Nana, you, you're also keeping the time, no? Uh, it's, it's seven now, but so. Uh, do we still have a couple of minutes? Or? Yeah, I think, it, um, I think it's a good idea to explain, explain the Anker Centrum in, yeah. as part of the Venice yeah. Biennial. Exactly, yeah. okay. So I will briefly do that. So the central piece um, was a sound installation that brought together um, six uh, different um, uh, musical pieces. Um, I had invited um, musicians, composers from very, very different um, backgrounds, very, very different musical traditions. And um, they all um, yeah, uh, contributed a piece for whistle. Um, that was then played into a matrix of uh, 48 speakers. Each um, composition had six, uh, had eight speakers, um, forming uh, a particular space within the bigger space. And and the six comp um, six compositions were played uh, in in a random way, looping and mixing um, in ever different uh, combinations, so that nobody was. In full control of the of the of the mix, um, and and it, they would um, yeah they would be heard um, sometimes separately, sometimes overlapping, sometimes um, basically um, overwriting each other, and and by that forming a, a collective space that um, was not homogeneous in the sense that um, each of them uh, you know um, trying to um, to do something fitting to the other, or or even coming, you know, uh, coming from from a similar tradition of sound, but but really um, um, sometimes accidentally um, merging, but sometimes also clashing, and and that kind of space uh, of of an yeah um, of difference of of a non homogeneity. Um, I thought was was very necessary um, to think about or to experience collectivity. Um, so, so this was basically the central piece um, of of the exhibition in in the pavilion itself, and we don't have time to really listen to it. I'm playing a couple of uh, of parts of it, but this is what it looked like um, in the actual space. Um, you see that there is. Um, a lot of speakers, and and you can trace the cables to understand which speakers belong together and which form um, a particular space. 
and um, and you can see that there's a there's kind of a, a wall in in the background, and when you go around, then you see that this wall depicts um, uh, a sort of uh, structure that that looks like a dam. Uh, it was called landscape primitive accumulation. And uh, a dam was interesting here because um, it's basically um, a built knowledge or built form of accumulation. Um, here, um, in this case, um, it, it was, you know, the behind it, it was empty and, and there was obviously no water left. So it was also uh, going into a, um, a situation of, of either non-human temporality, but also of what happens when accumulation ends. Um, and it had side rooms with um, yet like two other um, yeah, conditions of landscapes. This is the landscape um, vacancy that basically shows um, a plantation, a tomato plantation folded up waiting for its next um, productive phase. And then in the, in the other side room, there was the landscape study group, which basically showed um, uh, a group of stones um, sitting around a dried up uh, puddle um, and, and studying uh, in, in stone time um, how to um, get out of this mess. Um, and there was then um, a lot of um, other um, yeah, other activities that basically produced absence in in the um, um, yeah in the in the space of the pavilion. So uh, this is where basically the coordinates opened uh, to to the spaces that were not there, and that was a really important part. So this was um, in front of one of the anchor centers in Manching, Ingolstadt. This was on the fields in Foggia um, that you saw earlier with the. Um, demonstrations, and this is um, in front of the Juventa in Trapani, um, uh, the ship that is confiscated, that was uh, supposed to be a rescue ship. Um, so this was um, distributed over social media, um, but also um, there were uh, performative interventions um, that uh, that basically happened just in in, in various particular points of time. Um, press conferences, and there were pub two publications that um, contain a lot of material um, that will also stay um, about um, yeah these um, these three um, particular modes of accumulation and dispossession, uh, and and there were several concerts um, with. The musicians um, that participated in um, in tribute to whistle, but also a study gathering, a three-week study gathering called uh, Beyond Repair. Um, I just now very uh, quickly go through the images because we we ran out of time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So um, yeah, I I think I will not show the video because yeah. Mm. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah, as I said, there. But this is a nice image to, yeah. <laughs> to, end. <laughs> to end. Yeah, yeah. Um, on keeping like, oneself knotted. In opening, in landing, but also opening up too. Thank you, Natasha. Um, I just hear that we are joined in Zoom by Bini Adamchak, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe we can also bring Marwa into the picture, even though we have like maybe 10 minutes or maximum 15. But. Um, so I'm just quickly summarizing. There's, there's three instances you presented. One is a coalition of, col of cultural workers. One is a people's tribunal that of part of those people are happen to be some artists, but also the tribunal itself um, took place in a cultural space or an art space that is of a theater in Cologne, at least one of those instances. And then it had also a little a connection to the documenta, to a big art um, exhibition. And then um, the invitation to that very fraught concept of a national pavilion within a famous art by, uh, biennial that, is, that in Venice. Um, and I think, um, which was the Anka Centrum, which is, um, and the, what became very clear is one of the functions 
one of the possibilities li that lies within that um, you, go, you went through different practices that are in different ways related to art, being an artist, the art field or artistic practice. But one of the things that brings it together is the intervention or the interfering into the space of representation. And the second is amplification. And the whistle here is something that is a practice of protest and intervening into um, into processes of deportation, and then becomes also um, part of your work at the Anka Centrum as um, the sort of as part of an art event, and but also highlights what it can do. It can amplify. I would like to ask one question before I open up, and it goes back to the question of the name. When I introduced you, I said that I learned from you the, the, the question and the problem of biography, right? Because um, for a long time, um, or you created a whole, it was called Bioswap, I think, where you could swap your biography, right? And, and biographies are something that are asked for, for, you know, you have to give in your CV, if you apply for a job, etc., and it has to be homogenous and has to fit, and there shouldn't be any gaps, etc. And um, with the Anka Centrum, you also created a, um, you, you changed your name so it would, with a random programming uh, process that, that created the fitting name for a German, mind you, of course, people still ask you if your migration background somehow had something to do with your art, and you became Natasha Süder Happelmann. Um, and I'm mentioning this because one of the problems when it comes to the art world in terms of collectivity is the request for names. It cannot be a group, it has to be a person. And if you look at the shows of the collective of the group works from the 90s now, they're all presented with names. You know, the group consisted of some get left out and others do not. Yet that can also be a amplification. So I would like you to say something about this naming, non-naming, the amplification, the silence, the, you know, Natasha Süder Happelmann keeps, um, keeps her mouth shut and lets Helene Duldung speak um, on this issue of the authority of the name. Mm. Yeah, I think it's 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 not just an authority; it's an asset, right? And it's it's a fetish, and especially in the arts, uh, that is, um, it's the arts as as a system is so invested in the individual um, as an asset um, that um, that the name is basically, um, you know, um, is is very much the fetish. Um, so so if you um, um, if you want to think about um, solidarity structurally and not as a topic, as a theme, then then this is where you know this is one of the the points where you can um, where you can feel the strains, right? Like when you are when you've ever worked in as part of a collective, and then you know once the collective is. Um, you know, is seen or recognized, then they come and, and start picking certain people or, you know, picking, and I think Marwa, you also talked about this, and how to keep yourself knotted, you know, um, is, is, a, is a very, very, very difficult question in, in practice because these straining forces, they, they operate on, on, on bodies differently. And, and, and again, Elizabeth Povinelli has, has, has such a precise way to talk about this. Um, and she calls it power differentiated bodies, and that the effects of power um, work differently on different bodies, and you, you can never forget about that. Um, so, so I, I think that um, when when you when you corrupt a name, when you mask a name, when you make it unusable for that fetish, then already you know um, you 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 are trying to structurally keep yourself knotted. Or at least that was my 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 take on it. Bini, Mama, I think I want to hand over to both of you, either one of you, who would like to begin just to join the conversation if you want to. No? Take care. Okay. Please. So I, um, I like both of the talks very much, and I think when thinking about the connections between the talks, like one thing is very striking that all start in a way from a situation of fragmentation. Martha made this uh, very clear when we were talking about the fragmentation of the left. Then, of course, the fragmentation of the left is only an effect 
or the broader, deeper fragmentation of society, of the social itself, as a result of neoliberal economization, of neoliberal capital socialization, which fragments structures, which disconnects the relations and produces exactly this situation where society seems to be inexistent and instead we have just an assembly of singularities or as Natasha just said, individuals that keep on producing, keep on representing, keep on starring without any connections to relationships that first and foremost enable them to represent, to shine, to come to the surface. And I think this is also like the, the connection for me between the talks that then uh, the answer to the situation of fragmentation, be it the fragmentation of the left or be it the fragmentation of the social in general, is exactly producing those connections. And Natasha has the word in the title, knotting, producing knots, keeping the knots alive, but also making new knots. And this was, is exactly what we've seen between like an ecological movement and a feminist movement, between anti-racist movements and movements that are focusing on economical questions. And I think this is extremely urgent to overcome these divisions that we have been suffering from so much in the last decades and create new connections between struggles that often seem disconnected but are in fact yeah, that, that was one of the striking instances that um, Natasha mentioned this demonstration in 2006. That was, I mean, a huge demonstration that already said this is racism in the police force. Um, they are killing migrants. This is racist killings. Um, and this huge demonstration remained somehow invisible to the media, but also invisible to what then became the sort of the the, a coalition or an, a, sort of um, a coming together of groups and a learning of suppose you know supposedly anti-racist um, leftist groups that that there is a division of labor between let's say a migrant struggle against racism and this sort of and what that actually how that became to you know how did that come into the world and that division that, how that that was um, both that enabled that violence in, in a structural sense, structural racism, but also that became a new form of coalition. And, and then again, of course, the practice of coming together isn't easy. You know, it's fraught with other, that, that means you have to, you, you, you realize you learn a lot that you didn't know you didn't even had to learn. Um, so maybe that, um, for that, I would like to hand over to Marwa if you want to say something. I wanted to give, since, you know, what is it now? It's almost a quarter past seven, so Marva, I'd like to have you also in the discussion yeah. in whatever way you would like to do so. Because we're not giving answers, we're forming open knots. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, um, thank you, Bini. Unfortunately, I didn't get everything in uh, your presentation because of my very uh, poor German. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, Natasha. And uh, it's very inspiring to always, uh, you know, see the way you work and also uh, everything you are proposing. Um, and of course, thank you, Nana, for bringing all of that together uh, brilliantly. Um, I just want uh, to say that this uh, question of uh, knotting for me is uh, so um, crucial and also as, I mean, um, I'm, I want to think about it also in practice and how this is possible uh, within an art context or besides it or next to it. It does not have to be, you know, always uh, functioning within our art economy, but uh, I mean, this is um, our work and that's what um, you know where we are, uh, um, you know, uh, surviving also. But uh, I think that I would like to think about it as how it can be uh, also um, extended outside of that, and where these knots are crucial. And uh, you know, um, b because it seems uh, t to me, I mean, maybe I am a little bit. Uh, 
not so positive about the finding these nuts within that economy, but it seems to me a little bit difficult to, uh, you know, like um, bring people uh, together um, in that in that place um, because, of course, the drive and the economy, as Bini said, that makes you shine and is also very. Um, swallowing and uh, um, okay so I don't want to end on this uh, very cynical uh, note but I, I would like to think about this uh, where to find these nuts and where are they you know important so yeah. well I think one of the Natasha suggested amplification and ultimately there is also something that um, Beanie made very clear in her presentation that there is a certain knowledge you cannot it will not be an exhibition, it will not be, it can be, but it will not be produced in an exhibition, it will not be produced in a book. And I mean, I am. this is not an anti-intellectual, nor an anti-culture, nor an anti-art argument, not at all, but that there's a certain learning to be done that can only happen in solidarity, and that means in relations, and those relations are not institutional. Um, and I think that's probably, I mean, that's also a reminder to myself. There's something you can only learn in, a, in, in, in practice. And, you know, art is a practice, theory is a practice, um, reading, writing is a practice, making an, an event like this is a practice. Mm -hmm. But there is a different practice that we have to come back to. And I do think we're getting the sign that we have to stop. This is something that within this frame of this assembly will be addressed. I, I know there's initiatives and works that are also concretely from this area that we're in, from vetting, that are discussing exactly those questions of concrete local practices. So with this, I would like to thank... Yeah, yeah? one yeah, last word. Maybe just, just one thought, um, because you said it's so... Um, so brilliantly earlier with the necessity to carving out space and and uh, you know if if i'm i always i, I try to be an infra infrastructuralist in in all of this and say what do we have and what can we do with it and not all of it has to be visible you know you like you always you can always work with the you know um the right to op opacity so you can you can put one space um you know where it's expected and say, okay, you have your thing, but then you make other spaces that maybe not um, be accessible to what what is called the public or the the art system or whatever. But you use the infrastructure, you know, and and uh, and you use what 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 this um, uh, yeah this infrastructure um, makes possible um, to carve out these other spaces. And I think that's something that I'm exploring at the moment. And you know, if you just think of like. Um, if you have access to the foreign ministry, like that's already an interesting um, question of what what can you, how can you use that infrastructure, um, and not necessarily talking about it or presenting it in in, in any space, but but you know, um, as as in this form of carving out space. So th I just wanted to um, add that to to the discussion as maybe a. Not necessarily a positive note, but but something you can do. <laughs> I think that's a very concrete proposal, become an infrastructuralist. So thank you again. Thank you, Bini. Thank you, Marma. Thank you, Natasha. And thank you to the, uh, the whole technical team and the organizers of this soft solidarity assembly.